Welcome back to Super Metal Brothers. We're back for another reaction. This is the third Polaris video that we're reacting to. Actually, on the first one, it was the first time that I'd really heard Polaris that I know of. So I've actually become a pretty big fan of theirs. I like what all their new stuff that they're doing. I've heard a lot of their old stuff now. So I'm pretty much expecting some metalcore here. There's nothing much I could say about it than that. It's pretty return to form, I would say, metalcore. Like return to like early 2000s metalcore, I would say. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, they blend between metalcore and new metal for sure. As we've heard from the last two singles, they can go back and forth. Um, I would say I'm predicting this song to be maybe more of a ballad. That's my prediction anyways. But I'm ready to get right into it. Love Polaris now. I'm a huge fan. And I just want to keep seeing them win. So let's do it. I've been lost. Might be right. Yeah. some Lincoln Park vibes from this. You were right on the ballad thing. <laughs> Hit yeah. that on the head. Yeah, I don't know if you caught it, but uh, 
that definitely reminded me a lot of uh Lincoln Park. I was going to say their choruses, the way they compose their choruses, uh, reminds me of the Amity inf- Infliction. Oh, I could see that too. I've noticed with these three releases too, they've given us a little flavor. You know, we mentioned new metal, but you know, I, I saw something earlier on like TikTok or something, but it was like basically like new metal is not a genre. And it just like went over like all the like bands that are considered new metal and how different they sounded. Mm-hmm. And it's a hundred percent true. Yeah. You know, like yeah. Uba Stank is not the same as Slipknot. Sorry. Even though they're both at one time were considered new metal for some weird reason. Point I was getting at was that Polaris seems to give us a little bit different. Like last one, I heard some like Three Days Grace in there. And I can't remember what we heard on the very first one, but there was a lot of different. I'm hearing some Linkin Park. You're hearing Amity Infliction, like all those different things. So they're definitely drawing on a lot of influence from that time. It makes sense i mean a lot of bands are going that going to even on the deathcore side we're having some bands like incorporate new metal into their yeah. stuff by new metal i mean that era you know late 90s early 2000s you know era the uh trl era which i'm gonna be this is just my personal opinion i don't want to go backwards with music that way personally i and a lot of people are, are gonna like it and that's fine new metal appealed to way more people that metalcore and deathcore did and there were some cool things about it it just feels like a step backwards in my opinion i i disagree a little bit just because art all forms of art is typically like cyclic you know it go it, it's fair. a constant turn it's always moving forward but it's doing this as it moves forward yeah you, you always got to draw on influence and bring some of that old stuff forward that's how you how you stay fresh i mean it's like when you go down the your path of your metal journey let's call it right where you progressively get into crazier and heavier stuff much like we did it's so hard now like for me to go back like i love system of a down i love slipknot it but it's hard for me to listen to that anymore yeah does that make sense yeah that's like It's like I've reached a certain threshold of heaviness that it's hard to go back from that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think. Yeah. But to get back to uh, this song as we went yeah, on yeah. a huge ass rant. <laughs> we like to do that's that. That's the point of a metal podcast, I guess. Um, the song was good. Um, I did hit it on the head with the ballad. I just kind of got that vibe from the title of the song and the thumbnail. I think I said this before. When you see like a backdrop of like the front man standing in like a bunch of rain, it's usually going to be like a pretty <laughs> emotional song. The chorus caught me off guard because at first First, I wasn't really vibing with it, but then it ends on a really good note. And it's interesting because the bassist and the front man have a very similar style and sound. Like, I wouldn't be able to tell them apart if I was just listening to it. I agree. If I hadn't watched the videos for these three singles, I would have thought that was the same person yeah. in all three of them. And I can't remember if on the first one, if the bassist really did as much as these last two. Yeah, definitely. They have a similar style. I do have to say, though, for this one, it wasn't quite as exciting as that first release. I think it was Inhumane. Yeah, it might have been was the first one. They had that wicked ass solo in there. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. a very exciting song. And this one was pretty lax. But I mean, I think that the release schedule that they did on this, because the album's coming out September 1st, mm. I think. So this would probably be the last release before the album. Yeah. So they've given everybody a little flavor. They had a little bit harder one. They had one that was a little bit more new metal-ish. They, and then they had a ballad. So it makes sense. It's good yeah. to pull in, pull in the crowds and get people interested. The music was good. I just like more complicated guitar mm-hmm. typically. And I know that they're capable of that. So I want to hear that. You know, it's one of those things where music is so subjective, right? That to the point, like it, it is probably best from like, you know, a standpoint for the band to be like, let's show them that the variety of the album, right? Yeah. You know, because like that song is probably going to resonate with a lot of people where, you know, we we go into the depths of like tech death, the overly technical shit that that doesn't appeal to everybody. I think it's it was a good call to release a song like that right around this time. I think that's only going to serve them better as far as pre-orders and hyping up the album and the tour they're on in general so it was a good job for us it's been a year of thaw yeah more recently 
But I think for a lot of people, especially people who are more on the metalcore side, it's actually been a great year too. That like you have Invent Animate, Currents, and uh, mm. August Burns Red, and Amity now Affliction. Polaris, Amity Affliction as well. It's a killer year for metalcore in total. Yeah, like all those albums true. stand great on their own. Yeah, for me, for sure, it's Chinese New Year Thaw. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thaw, dude. Hundred percent. Right. Um, one last note I'll say about the song is I really like that switch up in the middle where it got super heavy there into like kind of that breakdown in those riffs and then back into like the ballad aspect. So that was dope. Aside from that, that was a fucking awesome song. I really enjoyed it. So if you guys like the reaction, the video, like, subscribe, we appreciate it. We're almost to a thousand. Help us out. Yeah, I guess we're off to the next one. Later, guys. Peace out.